Let's take a look at problem 4 in IMO 1994. To find all natural numbers m and n, such that n cubed plus 1, all divided by m n minus 1, is an integer. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. The first thing that I would like to investigate is if I replace this n by m, would this expression be still an integer? If this is true, then that means I can swap positions of m and n, and this expression will still be an integer. So there's some sort of symmetry inside it. So to see whether it's true, I'm going to multiply m cubed to this expression. So from this, from the given condition, given statement, this implies that m cubed multiplied by n cubed plus 1, all divided by m n minus 1, is also an integer. There are two reasons that I chose to multiply m cubed. The first reason is that after expanding, we will have m cubed n cubed plus m cubed divided by mn minus 1. Here we have an m cubed. So it will help us investigate whether m cubed plus 1 over the same denominator is an integer or not. Another reason, the second reason, is that I can rewrite m cubed n cubed as mn whole cubed and then I'll add minus 1 plus 1 in between so that if I only consider mn whole cubed minus 1, ignoring the plus 1 next to it, this expression will be a multiple of mn minus 1. So I can split the fraction. into some of these two fractions. Then for the frac first fraction, using the um, identity of the difference of cubes, this will be equal to mn whole squared plus mn plus 1, while the second fraction will be the thing I'm looking for. m cubed plus 1, all divided by mn minus 1. So uh, for our calculations, these are all integers. And so we know that because this is also an integer, what remains? m cubed plus 1 over m n minus 1 should also be an integer. So justify the first claim. That means I can swap positions of m and n. And more importantly, I can say I can use them with the most generality property, which is that I can assume m to be m n to be either equal or if not then m to be the larger number from the pre previous calculations that i've made i tried by multiplying some number to n cubed so to split up the fraction into an integer plus another fraction this helped me to reach some conclusion that m cubed plus one over m a minus one is also an integer and the second thing that i would want to do is Try to make use of the plus 1 and the minus 1 and see what I'm going to get. The way I'm, do it, I'm going to do it is n cubed plus 1 over mn minus 1 is equal to n cubed plus 1 minus mn. So extending from the, from the 1, I subtract it by m, my, uh, mn and followed by plus mn over the same denominator. So I'm going to split the fraction in this way by taking out 1 minus mn over mn minus 1 plus the remaining terms which are n cubed and plus mn. So the fra first fraction is actually just 
minus 1 plus n times n squared plus m over mn minus 1. Just take another common factor between n cubed and mn. So given that our starting fraction is an, is an integer, and I've taken up minus 1, so what remains over here, n times n squared plus m over mn minus 1 should also be an integer. However, notice that these two numbers, n and mn minus 1, are co-prime. To show this, in fact, for any prime p that divides n, p should also divide mn. This is obvious. However, this p must not divide mn minus 1. So that means n and mn minus 1, these two numbers, will never share a prime factor. So that means they have to be co prime. But for n over mn minus 1 multiplied by another number to be an integer, that means this implies n squared plus m individually should be divisible by mn minus 1 because n and mn minus 1 do not share any common prime factor. So that means for the blue box, it's not just an integer, but it's actually also a multiple of n. So that means n cubed plus 1 over mn minus 1, our original fraction, if it's added by 1, it has to be multiple of n. Notice that this property that n divides our original fraction plus 1 is only meaningful if n is greater than 1. So I'm going to separate in two cases. The first case, of course, is the meaningful case or the not so meaningful case, which is that n equals 1. And in fact, this is much easier to manage. So if n equals 1, then n cubed plus 1 over m n minus 1 is just a very simple fraction, and that's 2 over m minus 1. And this has to be an integer. Now for this to be an integer, there are only two possible cases, which is that m minus 1 has to be either 1 or 2. Notice that m has to be a larger number if they're not equal. So that means m minus 1 cannot be some like negative integer factors like minus 1 or minus 2. So m minus 1 can only be 1 or 2. And solving, we have m to be equal to 2 or 3. So that's the less meaningful case. Now, back to the meaningful case, which is that n is greater than 1, so it's um, some kind of um, legit multiple. Then I'm going to write n cubed plus 1 over mn minus 1 to be equal to kn minus 1, some integer k. Then notice that our original fraction can be bounded by, this is actually less than, n cubed plus 1 over n squared minus 1 because we have assumed that m to be at least n. So in fact, this inequality is not less than but less than or equal to. But still, we can achieve something. Factorizing, we have n plus 1 times n squared minus n plus 1 for the numerator and for the other part, with n plus 1 times n minus 1. So I can cancel out the n plus 1. What remains is just n squared minus n plus 1 over n minus 1. Again, I can use the splitting trick. So it will become n plus 1 over 
n minus 1. So that means this kn minus 1 is not even larger than n plus possibly some very small very small fraction. So rearranging I can say that k minus 1 or multiplied by n is less than or equal to 1 plus 1 over n minus 1. Notice that the, our right hand side is now actually just a very small number is at most 2 and the equality will only hold equality holds only when n equals 2 and as n grows larger then 1 plus 1 over a minus 1 will get even closer to 1 so together with the fact that k minus 1 all multiplied by n is less than or equal to this this expression and there are only very few cases for k minus 1 all multiplied by n. This will lead to three possibilities. The first one is that k minus 1 all multiplied by n equals to 2. The second case is that this product is 1. Or the third case is that this product equals 0. They are all very easy equations to, to solve. The first one. We can say that either k minus 1 equals 2 and then n minus 1 or k minus 1 equals 1 n equals 2. The case that n equals 1 has already been solved so we can simply ignore this. While for the, for the other case that means k equals 2 n equals 2 and so we know that 2 cubed plus 1 over 2n minus 1 is equal to 2 times 2 minus 1. So simplifying, we have that 9 over 2n minus 1 equals 3. So 2n minus 1 equals 3. That means m equals to 2. So we've got another pair of solution. Now for the middle case, given that the product is 1, so we must have k minus 1 and n to be both 1. Again, the case that n equals 1 has already been solved, so we can ignore this. And finally, for k minus 1 times n equals 0, because we know that n has to be a natural number, so that means it will never be 0, because our first natural number is already 1. So k minus 1 equals 0. And that means k equals 1. Now from this, I can say that n cubed plus 1 over m n minus 1 is equal to k n minus 1. In other words, is equal to n minus 1. So I'm going to make m the subject of this equation. n cubed plus 1 over m minus 1 equals m n minus 1. Now move the minus 1 at the right hand side to, to the left. We have this fraction at the left. So I have n cubed plus n over n minus 1 equals mn. Dividing both sides by n, which we can do that because n is positive. So I'm going to use the split fraction trick again, and I'm going to have n plus 1, or let's not skip that many steps, n squared minus 1 plus 2 over n minus 1 equals m. And so m equals n plus 1 plus 2 over n minus 1. Again, as m is an integer, n plus 1 is also an integer. So what remains, the fraction 2 over n minus 1, must also be an integer. But again, we have only very few cases to consider. From this, we know that n minus 1 equals either 1 or 2. 
so n equals 2 or 3 and put them back into our expression we know that m in both cases would equal to 5 so altogether we have these solutions so either when n is 1 we have 3 1 2 1 of course I can reverse the positions or when they are equal so mn equals 2 or finally when m equals 5 and again reversing the positions so these nine pairs are our solutions to this problem.